Welcome back to The Pulse, your weekly guide to global health. Wiping out smallpox was one of the great triumphs of modern medicine. But now the world is on the brink of another breakthrough, eradicating a truly awful disease caused by guinea worm. Guinea worm is a parasite, and there are no drugs, no vaccines against it. Once you're infected, the only way to deal with the worms is to physically pull them out of the body. It's as disgusting and as painful as it sounds. Fortunately, a 20-year effort to eradicate guinea worm disease is starting to pay off, and it could well be wiped out as early as 2009. So is this really the end of the line, or will the guinea worm turn? We went to Sudan to find out. This parasitic worm lives, grows, and breeds deep inside us. The worm can be up to one meter long. It is the biggest uh, human parasite. It cripples its victims and devastates fragile economies. It's the guinea worm. Lokai Nakadong is in terrible pain. A guinea worm is forcing its way out of her leg. It's not the first time she's suffered from this parasite, and it may not be the last. There are no drugs that can help her, no vaccine to protect her. There's only one way to deal with the guinea worm, to carefully twist it out. It's a painstaking process. This guinea worm is 10 centimeters long. It will take at least three days to remove. But guinea worms can be much longer causing weeks of pain and disability. When you started pulling the worm out, it wasn't too painful. But now I'm starting to feel a lot of pain. The worm cannot be pulled out any more today. Lokai will have to wait until tomorrow. When the worms uh, start to migrate to the surface, uh, they the worms produce uh, some irritating uh, substances to break the skin. This can uh, generate uh, fevers, uh, uh, vomiting, and uh, when there is a break of the skin, this very often is a point of infection, of bacterial infection. Millions of people in Central Africa get most of their water from water holes, cattle ponds and rivers. They catch guinea worm by drinking contaminated water. Professor Cairncross has been battling against guinea worm all his career. It's the immature larvae of these adult worms that live in the stagnant pools. They swim freely in the water, but they tend to get quite quickly gobbled up by little animals which are like shrimps. If you imagine a shrimp the size of a flea, you have what's called a cyclops. They gulp and swallow down whatever they see in front of them and if they see a wriggling worm they think that's lunch and it, it gets eaten. But it doesn't get digested because the worm is able to survive inside the cyclops. And the cyclops gets pretty ill as a result and tends to sink near the bottom of the pond. Um, so cyclops are particularly likely to get scooped up when people come with buckets to take water home to drink. Once swallowed, acid in the stomach quickly kills the cyclops host, but not the guinea worms. They burrow through the stomach wall into the abdomen, and it's here that the worms mature and begin to breed. They're typically about two centimeters long, um, and at that point they have intercourse, which is a pretty ghoulish thought, the male and female worms having intercourse in your body, but that fertilizes the female worm the female continues silently growing for a whole year. What's really amazing is that all this time, this whole year during which the worms have been living in your body and growing to considerable size, um, your body's immune system seems to have been completely fooled and is unaware that there's anything strange going on. We don't really know how a, a vaccine could be used to tell your immune system, watch out, there is something there. Without a vaccine, the next option is to use drugs to kill the worms inside the body. But no drug has been found that works reliably. Clean water would break the cycle of guinea worm disease, 
But in Sudan, a 20-year civil war has wrecked the country's infrastructure. Julius Lotobi is in the front line of the campaign to defeat Guinea Worm. He's a field officer for the American aid agency, the Carter Center. He's touring all the villages in his county to recruit local volunteers and supervisors. Julius has recently recruited Justin, who lives in the village of Naromnigit, deep in the bush, many hours by bicycle from Kapoeta town. With the equipment and training provided by the Carter Center, he can now treat local people in their homes. We found that about half the people who have guinea worm, their wound becomes infected. We also found that up to 18 months after the worms had emerged, about a third of the population were still feeling difficulty in performing household and agricultural tasks because of pain associated with the site where the worm came out. The volunteers do all they can, but their training is only basic. They are not doctors. The Carter Center looks for dedication rather than medical knowledge. We don't want to go into a community and say, this is your volunteer. It's someone that's well respected and trusted in the community, chosen by the community so that they feel comfortable going to that person. So far, Julius is finding that his volunteers are rising to the challenge. In the Iga I would like them to have training at least maybe three times, three times a year to teach them how to, to tell the people who have been uh, infected with a guinea worm not to enter in water. As well as providing treatment, they also have a crucial health education role. They have to stop sufferers from doing what they most want to do, cool their burning feet in water. This is because the emerging female worm is trying to release a huge number of baby worms. Her body by now has become almost entirely a, a tube containing a liquid in which there are about three million microscopic larvae or baby worms. To break out, the worm produces painful, irritating chemicals that blister the skin. People very often want to soothe this terrific irritation by putting the blister in water to cool it down. But that of course softens the skin and quite soon the blister bursts. And when it bursts, within the first day or two, several hundred thousand larvae, a huge number, are released. If patients don't avoid stagnant water until the worm has completely left their body, they could spread more worms. But providing clean water to these vast, arid African countries will be complex and expensive. The drilled borehole, which can typically cost $10,000. Uh, and if you're drilling that for a village of 70 people, you can imagine it's a lot of money you're asking a very poor government to spend. So the challenge was to find a cheap, simple, yet effective method of removing the guinea worm larvae. The weak link turned out to be the cyclops water flea, the guinea worm's host in stagnant water. Although the cyclops are too small to see, they're big enough to be caught in the mesh of a filter. So the Carter Center, along with other agencies such as UNICEF, began distributing thousands of filters to women through the volunteer network. By filtering the water as they collect it, they're removing the parasite at source. These filter cloths mean that every village in Africa can now have a water supply free of guinea worms. But many Africans are nomadic. They raise cattle. Their herds are their wealth and their pride. While women stay in the villages, the men and the boys drive the cattle across the countryside for months at a time, searching for good pasture to graze. Men and animals have to drink wherever they can. To help them, an individual pipe filter was developed with a tiny piece of filter cloth in the barrel. These are pipe filters we give to, to young men, each with one, 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 one. Because they are not in one place, when they are looking after animals, each one in his own way, and when he's thirsty, he just drink wherever he gets water. 
Distributing filters and giving treatment is vital. But it's the health education the volunteers give that's made the biggest difference. This was quite amazing. Despite the low coverage of filters, no more than 40-50% of the household had the filters. We saw a dramatic reduction of people infected due to the health education. Does anyone know how to prevent themselves from getting guinea worm? Okay, she had two answers actually. You can boil the water, finished, or you can filter the water. Both of those are ways to prevent guinea worm. In 1980, the World Health Organization estimated that there were 10 million cases. By 2006, there were fewer than 11,000 cases reported in just nine countries, all in equatorial Africa. In a few years, it's possible that guinea worm could be eradicated. It would be the first human parasite driven to extinction. We need to be sure that there are no new cases, because you can have new cases arriving from other villages, and we can have the reintroduction of the diseases in an area, because another village 20 kilometers or one kilometer far still have a lot of cases. There is a need to keep the surveillance active for three years at least to be sure that the area is clean and the whole country is clean. The people of Sudan are beating the guinea worm. They know that with just a little more effort, it could be eradicated forever. That's all for this edition. But join us again next time on The Pulse.